All right, so for, sorry for the hangar door noise, but here's what I'm doing on troubleshooting. Still having issues with the cooling system. So I put clear tubing, it's rated 175 degrees. That's the warmest uh, rating I could find. So what I'm looking at right now is when I fill it, do I get coolant coming back out of the head to the thermostat? The theory, my theory is, if you look at the engine right now, this is the highest point. The reservoir is slightly higher, but the coolant level is right about where the blue hose comes in. So the highest point on the engine is this outlet right here. And before I drained it, I cracked this valve or this uh, hose right here, opened it up and there was no coolant at all. So like there's air getting trapped in right here. It's limiting the flow. And uh, I think that's the problem. Okay, so watch this as I burp it, get the air out of it. Look where the air's going. It's going right up to that high spot. So I raised the tail high enough to get the coolant to flow in there. Look, all that air going right up into there. As suspected, and that could be the issue. So an update on the cooling issue. So what I was seeing in flight was higher than normal oil temperatures, but the coolant was the coolant temperature was was fine. So the radiator was working just fine, but I wasn't getting proper cooling from the heat exchanger, which is right here. And this has coolant coming off of the water pump through a core where the oil is and then it circulates back up to the thermostat. So what I did is I finally, I tried a couple different things with the system. I switched the, the temp probe from the output line to the actual heater, heat exchanger. Temps were exactly the same. So there was no difference there. Um, so what I, I finally ended up doing was we had a couple theories. It was either possibly the water pump had issues or maybe the head gasket was leaking exhaust into the coolant system. But either way, it was air in the coolant system that was aerating it, and that was not allowing for proper exchange of the coolant to the oil as far as the heat exchange there. So what I did is I put these clear tubing uh, on, on the coolant system. Over on this side, I did the same thing. From the T to the water pump, up to the thermostat, and then um, uh, to where it comes out of the head. So real quick on the flow of this, the coolant comes hot out of the engine to the thermostat. The thermostat's um, cl not closed yet, so when it's open, it bypasses down this tube to the T. And because it's not open, it can't flow through the radiator, so it goes the path of least resistance, so it comes through the T back to the water pump. So it's just circulating like that. The Heat exchanger is right here, the small hose, and it's circulating also. So those run all the time, which is interesting. You think you'd want that to not flow with the thermostat open because it would help heat up the oil quicker, but it doesn't work that way. So when the thermostat closes, it closes off this opening down here on the bottom, then pushes the coolant through this hose into the expansion reservoir then out the, the bottom expansion reservoir, and then down this hose to the radiator, through the radiator, back up to the T, and because this is closed, fluid can't flow up this hose, so it turns and goes to back to the um, water pump. So that's how the system works. The problem was that this top rail was actually flipped over, so these turned that way, and so the height of it was about the height of this the fuel line here. And it was coming across almost level with the top of the reservoir, and the thermostat then sat up at the top of the reservoir, and when the tail isn't up in the air like this, when it's low, this is the highest point in the coolant system. So the air was getting trapped at the top of the engine. No matter how hard I tried to, to bleed it out, um, before I ran it, I couldn't get the air out. 
And then when you start it, it just aerates the whole system. It doesn't get the air out through the expansion tank. It's flowing so fast in there, it just aerates the system. Then as that air heats up, it expands, pushing more and more coolant up through the expansion tank. Then it was overflowing into the overflow tank. And at one point it actually overflowed that. So that's how much air was in there. So it was definitely a problem. So what we did, um, thanks so much to Brian Dacus for helping me out with this. We got another set of these exit pipes off of an engine over in Reno. He cut them and then welded them so that they, they said turning that way, they turn this way, which lowers the whole system about an inch and a half. Brings it across to the thermostat. Now the thermostat's below the expansion tank, the top of the engine's below the expansion tank, especially with the tail up in the flying position. So now when I fill it, I'm expecting to see the coolant fill all the way up with no air. Just to check that, I put a bleeder valve off this little outtake off of this. This was originally used to go um, over to the throttle body, had coolant running through it on the snowmobile. It helps run coolant through there. Um, we eliminate that on the airplane application. It's not necessary. So I took this takeoff hose here to a bleed valve and I'll be able to push that down until coolant comes out and be sure that there's no air right here. Um, so I think we've got it squared away. Again, I still have the clear tubing on there and this won't stay. It's just to see if, if the system works properly. I don't wanna be second guessing whether it works or not while I'm flying it. So I'm gonna set it up right now, fill it, make sure it all fills right. I'm doing mostly just water in it now. And then once that's proven to work, the new setup, then I'll go ahead and put the coolant in. We'll put it all back together and we'll go fly it. That's really the only issue I'm having with the plane right now. All right, so it's back together with the coolant hoses on there. A couple different color ones up here because I needed these angles. I'll probably change those out with the blue once I order up to the proper size ones. This one's got a little bit of a funky bend in it right here. I just want a bigger horseshoe than I had. Uh, other than that, it's all situated and um, filled up with coolant. I ran it for a little bit with, before I put the prop back on and uh, no leaks. Took it up to temperature. I checked the bleed valve, which is right here. And uh, coolant came out, no air. So I think it's good for another test flight. Um, just getting the boot cowl back together now. Made my boot cowl removable. And I just put a riv nut in here because I can't get a wrench back here very easily. And I was gonna do the top one. And unfortunately the window is behind that one. So if I put a rib nut in there, it's gonna squeeze the, the glass or the uh, acrylic. So I don't want that because I don't wanna be able to get the windshield off ever without breaking it. So that one's gonna have to continue to have the screw with the nut on the back, which is a bummer because it's really hard to get the nut on, but that top one's easier than the bottom one. So I did this on both sides. I'll go ahead and put the boot cowl back on. So it's back together. All new coolant system set up. Got a couple cameras on it. I'm gonna go ahead and go test it again. <clears throat> be perfectly honest, I'm more nervous about this flight just because if it doesn't show an improvement, I, <laughs> I'll be crushed. So with all the effort going into it to get it back to flying ready, uh, I know the video doesn't really capture that, guys, how long it's taken me to Get back in the air again so it's been about almost two weeks so 
hopefully everything goes as planned. Keep your fingers crossed. We're going to see those lower oil temps and no uh, coolant boil over or any problems with that. So let's go fly. Clear touch and go, traffic king here departing runway 16. Cleared for 16, touch and go, 84 Delta Lima. Riding tower information Alpha, time 1653, Zulu observation, wind 1905, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 22, dew point 07, altimeter 2994. Visual approach and use, landing and departing runway 16, advise on initial contact, you have information Alpha. Papa QO is at the West Hangars, like taxi to 16 with Alpha. Experimental 29 or 2 Papa Kilo, reading ground runway 16, taxi via Mike Delta. Yeah, Mike and Delta, 2 Papa Kilo. Experimental 292, Papa Kilo, runway 16, wind 120 at 5, clear for takeoff, and how long will you be orbiting for, sir? I'll probably give it a good 15, 20 minutes, unless uh, I need to return. Copy that. Yeah, 2 Papa Kilo, clear for takeoff, 16. talk here a little bit. So I saw 230 in the top of the climb. That's, uh, wouldn't want to see that. But it backed it off now down to 8,000 RPM, which is kind of a low 50% cruise setting. And the oil temperature came back down to 228. Um, that's closer to what everybody else is seeing in the 220 range uh, on hotter days. So just going to let it cruise here for a little bit at 8,000. See where that oil settles in. It's now down to 226. The coolant temperature's dropped off to 158. So it's getting good cooling. Not seeing any coolant in the cockpit like last flight. 858, running ground, runway 16, tax speed Delta. This 50% uh, cruise, I'm at 91 miles an hour. And again, I switched to the two-blade prop, pitched to 17 on the NR SR118 prop, the 81-inch uh, or 2,065 millimeter is the prop that's on here. All right, it's settled back to 225, guys, that is uh, an improvement. I'm not running it as hard as I was, so we'll get to that here in a bit, but I just want to see where it settled in at the same cruise setting that everybody else was using. A completely acceptable oil temperature, though. Uh, maybe one of those things where, in this hot environment, like Redding, if I'm going to do sustained higher RPM, flight, then a secondary oil cooler may be necessary. Brian Dacus came down here last week and was flying around. He's used to seeing you know, around 200 or even less on the oil temperature all the time up in Reno throughout the winter. And he was up in the same 220 range that I'm at right now. So, you know, lower sea level, or, lower elevation, we're down to sea level almost, about 700 feet here. 
and uh, temperatures that are much higher. The current outside air temperature right now in Redding at 3,000 feet is 66 degrees. So it's really settled in nicely at 225. Make a note of that in case my computer battery dies. I don't have a log of that. Okay, so let's bump it up to that 8,500 or 8,400 RPM. There's about 2,200 RPM. Let's go to 2,250. All right, 65% power. That popped us up to 96 miles an hour. Much, I'm much happier with this two blade. The three blade I was seeing about 85 miles an hour at the same setting. So it's just a little bit too big of a prop running three blade 81 inch on the 150, 160 horsepower. So they make a smaller one at 2000 millimeters, which is about 79 inches. That might be a better setup if you go over the three blade. But I'm liking this two blade, it's super smooth. There's just no vibration at all. Okay, looks like it's settled at 230. That's going to be our highest screw setting for now. We're not going to do much much more than that. Alright, so that slowly climbed its way up to 234. Still not real hot. Um, that is warmer than than what Brian was seeing, so that's frustrating. But yeah, I guess I got to keep in mind that I've got a lot more pitch in it. Attention all aircraft information, Bravo now current altimeter 2993. So, I mean, you got to compare apples to apples. He's got four degrees less of pitch in the prop. That, that could be the difference. So let's take it back down and see if it drops back to that 8, 820, see if it cools when I come back down to 8,000. And it is cooling, so that's good. So it kind of reaches a point, goes back down. That's not what was happening before. It would just slowly keep rising throughout the flight. So it is cooling. That's good. So if you get into a hot, hot oil si situation, running it hard, I can back it off. See that oil temperature come back down. Yep, came right back down to 226. I'm going to data log that while I can, while I still have battery. All right, so now we're going to continue, since uh, that's all good, I'm going to cont continue with the flight testing a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start with a stall test, just clean. Give me an idea of where it's stalling, how it stalls, what the signs are. So there's 55, 53, 52, 51. Forty-seven, forty-six, forty-five. Yeah, tower Baron five five zero to the Alpha. You call our base for Baron five five zero to the Alpha. Do you have traffic in sight? So it's forty-four with no flaps. Let's try it with flaps. Zero Julia Alpha, turn base now, runway one six, one two one zero at six, clear to land number two. Okay, Julia. That's forty four, no flaps. First notch, forty three, forty two, forty one. Forty one. Start getting a buffet there at forty one. Surprisingly slower than the uh, my old kit box. Trumper six one, so you will make a right turn on three zero. Let's go full will make a right turn on Bravo, and taxi to park via Delta. I uh, will take Bravo and taxi to park in uh, 
Copy that, cross runway one two by Delta. Thirty-six. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. That's impressive. So what I'm doing now is finding an RPM that has a uh, headset that has a capability of keeping it level at a minimum controllable speed, you know, somewhere 1.2, 1.3 VSO, so probably right around, probably looking around 50. So I was trimming it back for 50. Seeing what power setting that is, it keeps me from descending. Right about 6,000. Obviously, slow flight with flaps works better. So I'm trimming it out now with one notch of flaps in. So, yeah, right around 5,800. So it's just good to know, you know, if you pull back, if you're flying around slow, what RPM you want to be at. So, you know, probably keep it, keeping your speed up, safely up. A 6,000 is probably a good number for that. Yeah, right around 82, it's real happy. 8,200 RPM gives me about, see where it settles. About 95, so 90 indicated, 95 true. Well guys, after this flight, I clean up all my mess here at my buddy's hangar. I think it's time to move it back over to Benton. I'm uh, feeling pretty comfortable with what's going on now. I've got 153 on the engine temp, 212 on the oil temp. I don't know if just cycling it through the paces is, is helping with getting any additional air out of it. Um, we'll see where it comes up to running at 22. Before it was at 226, now it's at 214. We'll see if it climbs back up there. But it's definitely better than it was. I'm not having real high numbers like the two, you know, 250 that I was seeing before. So yeah, I think it's very manageable at this at this point. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in. It's been about an hour. Air yeah, Reading Tower, Experimental 292 Papa Kilos on the downwind. I'd like to make this one a full stop for one six. Experimental 292 Papa Kilo, runway 16, 1200 at 6, good land. Clear land, 16, 2 Papa Kilo. The reason I was going for that kind of minimum RPM is to find a good setting for your descents. So, you know, power back in the pattern, I found that it disconnects from the freewheel at about 5,000. So if you go much below 5,000, the engine goes down the idle, but the propeller is now spinning under uh, the wind is pushing the propeller, where if you keep it above that, you're still driving the propeller and you don't get the drag. As soon as you disconnect, it actually starts coming down much steeper, which is kind of cool because you can play around with that. You know, you can you can use it to get a steeper approach by coming below 5,000 RPM. You just have to remember that it's going to be a second there as you come back up to catch the RPM of the prop with the engine. So there's you know, potentially a little lag there, where if you keep the RPM up, then you'll have uh, instant power when you need it if you want to do a little burp there at the end. But you're also going to have less drag. So, I don't know, something to think about. That's one of the things, that's, there's plus and minuses to the gearbox and the sprite clutch. Um, that's what I mean by that. It's It's got its, its uh, negatives, is that it does create more drag in an engine out, but it also make, allows you to do steeper approaches too. Well, I'm going to track this up to a success on the cooling system modifications. Um, still a bit higher, but I am pitched out more than I'm comparing it directly to what Brian Dacus is seeing on his installation because it's very similar. Same AEM setup. So, trying to keep it within gliding distance all the time to the runway. You end up being high a lot. Okay, I'm going to do full flap landing this time. We're in 1607. It's 
weird because even at 5,000, it sounds like you're bringing in a lot of power on landing, which I'm really not. I'm at 60 right now. Pretty decent descent rate. Thing land short. Experimental two nine or two Papa Kilo, are you going back to the hangar, sir? Yeah, that get uh, this exit here and take Mike back to the West Hangar. Approved as requested. We're taking our two Papa Kilo Roger. Oil's down to one ninety after doing that approach. Bring up my video camera again here. There we go. So we'll pull it, make sure we don't have any leaks or anything going on. I want to see what the overflow looks like, see if it was actually going into the overflow out of the reservoir, the expansion tank that is. Um, overall, I think that was a pretty successful flight. I'm pretty happy with those numbers. Got some stall numbers finally. Those are much lower than they were on my five. And I don't know if that's attributed to the airspeed indication system or uh, a lighter weight. I'm going to say it's probably because it's so much lighter. So. All right. So one thing I do want to change still is the reservoir. The inlet is sitting right at the top of the reservoir. So there's not a whole lot of expansion. This is a, it's not really a reservoir. It's an expansion tank. And by filling the coolant to cover that inlet, there's no room for expansion. So as that coolant expands, it's coming out into the overflow. So that's not going to work. Um, you can see the outlets down at the bottom. If I put this one at the bottom, then I would trap air again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another one of these tanks, and I'm going to turn it on its side and run it out lengthwise like this, put the cap on the top so that it clears the cowl, and then have an inlet um, three inches down from the top on either side, inlet and outlet. That would basically leave me three inches up in the tank lengthwise for it to expand. So I'll get that stuff ordered, new hoses to make that work, and that will be the final change. But um, it ran good, everything worked good. It's just there's no room for expansion in this expansion tank the way I've got it set up. Um, again, oversight on, on my part, not thinking that through. Um, but as soon as it expands, it goes in the overflow. I let the, all the pressure off the bleed valve, and so now it's not drawing it back in either. So now I've got to fill it again. Got the tail up just in case it does pull that back in. It won't create any air in the line. But that's the last change I'm going to make to the coolant system is I'm going to order another reservoir. I could just carve this one up, but once it had glycol in it, it's not going to be easy to weld. So I'm just going to start over with that and uh, get a new one coming. Get that all welded up and then I'll change that out until then it should, should work fine. So I'm going to tackle putting in the new reservoir later this week. Uh, but for now, I decided it's time to take it back to Benton where I have access to my own hangar with my tools and all my supplies in there. Uh, I want to thank my buddy Chad again for letting me use the hangar over at Reading Municipal. It was uh, awesome to have that available and to do the flight testing around that big airport. Uh, but I'm going to make a quick flight back over to Benton and put it away in my hangar. And uh, I'm going to wrap this one up here, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, get some more results uh, as we progress through the flight testing and start to learn more and more about this setup. So far, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this uh, airplane. It's got a real unique setup with this engine. The takeoff and climb performance is inc absolutely incredible. I was seeing uh, about 1,800 feet a minute climb outs at 65 miles per hour, which uh, is, is pretty amazing. Cruise speed's just shy of 100. And that's really what we're shooting for is 100 mile an hour cruise with a good takeoff performance. So uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button, notification bell, when I so you guys can know when I post the next one. And uh, thanks again for watching.